community activist who's a legal scholar and a, an attorney in private practice who also works for a local school district. We have Darlene who's in the middle. Uh, Darlene Anderson uh, is a parent, is a community activist, and many of you, if you were here early, has a wealth of knowledge about uh, the school district and its policies and how they impact our children. And then uh, next to Darlene is Greg King. Uh, Greg used to be our neighbor in the hood with us. He's moved out. We miss you, Greg. Greg uh, operates a program called Always Knocking, uh, where he works with youth. Uh, sometimes people use the term at risk youth. But my philosophy is all of our kids are at risk. So we would like to tell Greg, we thank you for working. Uh, come on in, y'all, uh, for working with the youth and providing the youth a voice. Um, so let me just give you a little background how we got here today. Back in February, when, uh, when we celebrated our third year anniversary, uh, the issue of uh, the pipeline, edu school to, to prison pipeline kept coming up. And we didn't have enough time to discuss that. So we decided to develop some time on our agenda today to bring people together, to invite the community to come out. And let's begin to engage in a discussion about this. You may hear the term used many different ways. The Children's Defense, term, Children Defense Fund used the term from cradle to the prison pipeline. Because they see there's so many disparities amongst children of color from the time that they're born to the time they leave and make their transition with their ancestors. So uh, they just look at it from a, I don't want to say, they look at it from a holistic perspective. Today we're going to look at it dealing with education. So a few ground rules. We would like to encourage each one of the speakers to spend about 10 minutes doing their opening remarks. Then normally, if you all have been with us, we normally end around 12. Today we're going to go till about 1230. So around noon, we're going to try to end the, the discussion in terms of the panel making their formal, formal presentation. So then you as the audience can pose questions and everything. If this, if people really like this dialogue, we may look at reinviting re 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 them back to continue the discussion. Okay? Okay. So who would like to go first in terms of a panel member? So, Okay, Greg is going to go first, and Greg, you're going to talk about impact on youth and community? Okay, go ahead. And Greg, you have to speak loud. You have a soft voice. Uh, number one, I want to thank y'all for inviting me to be a part of this, uh, this panel discussion. And my, and my one word that I'm going to surround it with is genocide. Mm -hmm. And the uh, system will turn off an entire race of people at one time. Well, well that, that is happening in our, prison, uh, in our school systems every day. From the womb to the tomb to the cradle to the grave. And then also, a uh, long time ago when the, when the games became very, very known, you know, and they came up with the word blood and crip. Long time ago, blood was it went for black liberation of organized defense. And then crip is civilian revolution independent party. And, and all of it is, is still around uh, a form of genocide and today our school system, I work, what I do is, is I work with a lot of kids that the system has labeled our kids the behavior kids. That's, that's to cover up the word genocide in their form and in their fashion. Uh, I'm going to make it real simple. Uh, a kid get in trouble, as Sister Darlene said earlier, he or she gets sent to a, a hearing. The hearing officer, and there's not many of them, and we're not there, uh, as color, um, sends the kid to a continuation school. That's the word they use, continuation. Because until that kid, he or she is 18, the, the department is still responsible for, for their education requirements. They get sent from a public school to the hearing office, from the hearing office to a continuation school. And that's that form of genocide that is alive and kicking right now today. Now, Sister Darlene is going to talk a little, a little later, but once that kid is issued a citation, that does give them more rights to kick our kids straight out of school and refer to the, uh, to the penal system. And then one of the biggest uh, things that against us is I did a survey two years straight with a lot of the adults uh, that have criminal background that's 10 to 15 to 20 years of age. It's been 20 years since they've been in trouble. But the system has brainwashed 
we as a people that, well, I have a criminal background, so I can't get a job at the school, uh, nor can I volunteer at the school because of my criminal background. But what it's our responsibility to educate our people that you may have a criminal background record, but you still have the right to go to the school to check on your son or daughter. That's right. and, said, and that's what's not happening. That's another piece to the form of genocide. Only time we hear from them is when that kid gets, you need to come pick your kid up from school because he or she just got into a fight or something to that nation. And yes, it is a lie that kids are in kindergarten are already getting labeled to get kicked out of school before they even get to first grade because of under the behavior pattern. What's that, section 48? 48,900. 48,900. We really need to check into the 48,900 section because that's what's putting the label on our kids even before they get to first grade. They, they warehouse our kids in school at the continuation school. The teachers out there are not certified teachers. They are people who have been given the job and say, please be quiet, can you sit down here and do this assignment? What they're looking at at that moment is just for the ADA so that they can get the money that the feds give those people for every kid that's in the seat. That is a form of genocide, people. <coughs> and it, it is up to us to educate our parents, those who have the background that's 15 to 20 years old, to know that they still have the right to go to the school and check on their son or daughter and what's going on. That's right. that, that, that is so true. And if we allow, and I say we because I'm a part of it, although I'm doing the work that I do, I still have to include myself because that's the struggle and that's what I will continue to fight for. If we do not start reaching out to the community more, the next time we have a meeting, we want to always encourage everybody to at least bring one more person with you. Everybody can't come to the table and talk, but if we go down there and big numbers of bodies and just sit there, that's the most important thing there is. You know, and, and it's more to the genocide system, the way it's happening, than is to the table. That's why I raised the question earlier, the process of the kids that's going to be selected to go to the charter school. Yes, we want to close the achievement gap, but even in applying for that charter to get that charter, there are some things that has to be not seen or not heard. So we must pay a close attention to even the process of the kids that will get selected to go to the charter school. I understand the charter school process, but the things that we don't understand, just like the comment I made just when I raised the question, can open up a whole other discussion. And yes, there is some kids that's already in the SCOE system, Sacramento County of Education, that will not get selected, even if they are in the South Sacramento area, the area that they're trying to first, that will not have the opportunity to go to that charter school. So that's something that we definitely need to pay close attention to. And that also fits in the form of the genocide process. So. Oh, my turn. OK. Yes. OK, thank you, Greg. talk in two minutes. In okay. two minutes is important. Okay. And so, but I'm not, I'm going to try to wrap it all up. But to fill in where he left off, the, the county pays $97,000 a year to house an, a juvenile inmate. And it's 243000 for an adult inmate. So don't ever think that your child is not important to Sacramento County because they have made their life's income on incarcerating our children. And so, and also, when you're looking at a juvenile who has went through the hearing, a lot of these 